Space Model Weathering for Beginners, also known as Get Good Space Weathering by Some Noob. Hey friends and welcome. Space Model Weathering for Beginners and how to use the pin wash technique to add depth, detail and weathering effects to your model. Now this approach can really be used on all genre of scale models, airplanes and tanks too. But this time I'm demonstrating on a classic space white finish for you and this way of doing it is especially attractive and appropriate on Machine and Krieger space models. The one I am showing is a Mark 44 White Knight prototype and it's a 120th scale plastic model kit from Hasegawa Models. For more information, please visit my website on paintonplastic.com on how to buy these. I've put a link in the description for you. I've done the paint steps are now finished uh, and I've used a mixture of uh, say the space white, the off white, white and uh, a couple of other tones of colors to, to add visual interest to the model. Uh, I've also done the water slides. Uh, to protect those water slides from the weathering process, uh, I'll be using a couple of different kinds of solvents on them. I've added a generous coat, a coating, a layer of, uh, of glass, glass lacquer paint in this case, Mr. Color GX, super clear. Is that a two or a three? It's the super clear. Uh, I've used this one a couple of times. It's very, very nice. Uh, I will admit that over the course of different models, you'll see me use different clears and it's simply because I've run out and I'm going back to the next one I have in stock. So I'll have a couple of, uh, of clears in rolling stock at any one time. Now just to give you some tips on it, I think that one of the challenges that some folks might have with using clears is that they may thin them a little too much. Uh, this one I've thinned it 50-50 you can see it's, it's relatively thin, but it's thicker than some other paints. Glosses are just a different creature. I've thinned it 50-50 with this one, T06 uh, Brushmaster Thinner from Guy Notes. It's almost identical to the T07 that I often show, but it has uh, less additives. So when I'm airbrushing, uh, this one, it does feel slightly cleaner. Uh, it's not that the other one feels dirty, but it feels lighter and a little cleaner and I like it through the airbrush. So I often use this one for clear coats and uh, lighter color finishes, etc. For the first step, I'm going to go with pin washes. Nice and simple and uh, they work very well over this gloss finish. Uh, no, this is not sponsored by AK Interactive. Uh, other paint substitutes that I can suggest for using here would be simply oil paint. Uh, I'd use a mixture of, like going by the colors, these could be a mixture of ultramarine and lamp black, for example, would work pretty well. Um, again, oil paints, uh, some of the paints from different brands that they either call Industrial Earth or um, the Starship Filth Sludge Type series, pretty similar colors. But these ones, I'm going for a greeny blue tone, uh, just because I like how that looks on space finishes like this, and I have used it in the past. Uh, also, if you were going to use something like uh, say Tamiya enamels, which I also have, uh, dark sea blue would be a perfect one for this. Uh, maybe mixed with black if it wasn't dark enough for you and also perfect for the filter uh, process as well. I'm going to now show you two slightly different approaches to it. There's going in dry and going in wet. The best way for me to explain my decision making process on that is for details that I want to be heavier, I'll probably go in dry. And then for details that uh, require less of an outline, uh, I'll go in with a pre-wet approach. I like to think of it just like inking a 2D art project in that uh, important details should receive a heavier outline and more minor details can get away with a lighter outline. So pin washes, you can also think of it as inking or outlining your model. Okay, now this piece is perfect for showing the, uh, the go in dry method first. Uh, this is one of the side panels, so I want these, uh, these rivets uh, details at the top of the piece to, to look, uh, to stand out, to have a nice bold outline. I'll go with uh, the wash product is thicker than the panel liner. They're both really good, but the wash is the thick one, which will be perfect here. It's the first time for me to mix this up, so I will use my, uh, my electric stirrer. I will move it away from my models though, slightly off camera, apologies, but, uh, the first time you splash stuff all over your work, you'll know exactly why I'm doing this. Okay, depending on the size of the uh, area that I'm working, sometimes I will just use the, uh, the paint that's left on the stirrer. It's just fast and economical. Uh, if I do need to work on larger surfaces, which I will be doing shortly, I'll 
drop some of it into this. I may even thin it further depending on how I want it to look. But let's go straight in. I'm using a synthetic brush here. Now again, I've just gotten a, a big sample pack from AK Interactive. They didn't ask me to make this. This is purely on my own choice. Uh, they say this is a three, three zero. Uh, size brush, it just looks reasonably small and pointy to me. Let's let's try it out. Synthetic brushes like this are good for solvents. Uh, I wouldn't use my good samples for it. I'll touch it around the spot and look at that. Because of that wonderful Mr. Color uh, surface on this, you can see that it's stayed very cohesive around the, uh, around the detail and uh, a nice level of thickness there. Now I'm going to leave that for say 30 minutes or so before I work with it. You can work with them straight away, but um, I think it is better to, uh, to give it a little bit of time. Now, because they become a little uh, easier to work with, a little bit more uh, malleable, and I find I can blend them into the surface a little bit better uh, once they've had a little bit of time to dry. That is one of the best points of working with enamel products is they give us more time. I can do this with acrylics as well, and so can you but um, the working time, you really got to be on point to get it all done in that drying time. Because if you guys have experimented, you know exactly what I mean. You'll leave those, those tide marks, which is then difficult to get off. Yeah, that's a, that's a, it's a little rough. Sorry, I really should have been paying a bit better attention. The other one was nicer. But this is, uh, that's about how much I both want in terms of volume of paint. Uh, I'll do another one here. And that's a basic pin wash first step, like that. The pre-wet technique uh, is just how it sounds. So I use a, uh, a larger brush. This one, what have I got, a synthetic number two. And uh, you can see it's been used a few times. So this is in, a, say, the middle of its life, and I just use it as a mop. I'm using an odorless uh, enamel thinner here. Uh, you don't need to use this one. It's a generic product, um, so you can get it from the art store as well. And, uh, but you can also use the enamel thinner that you use with your enamel paints. They all work very well. I'm using this one because, yeah, it does have a lower odor. Pre-wet, pre-wet. Uh, again, because of the, the glass finish, that awesome coat of, uh, of Mr. Color, super clear. And using my, uh, my paint loaded brush from before, we'll touch it in and we should have it breaking the surface tension and zooming around the model a little more. Thanks to the gloss coat, it's keeping it nice and tight. Like that. And you can see just with that one touch, it's gone almost halfway around. We've almost completed 180 degrees there. We'll try it again from this side. Let capillary action and gravity help us out. And there we have, pre-wetting it has allowed it to move through the details quite well. It does look a little rough or sloppy in a couple of places. Don't beat yourself up about it. Uh, we will be refining that back further once it's had a little bit of time to dry up. Now after some work here, I also kind of remembered the concept that I'm always, I'm always remembering partway through, often when I'm off camera, and I wanted to share this with you. The, um, Despite these products, these ready-made products being, being very uh, convenient, what happens is, whilst over the course of working, I always notice that I need more color variation. So it also then, I, I would, I'm not sure exactly how to put this out there, but you know, it also then asks me, well, if you're gonna use custom mixes like this of pre-made products, why not just start with uh, custom mixes to start with? These do make it easy in that you can start with a brown, a blue. And when I was uh, first into this kind of weathering, uh, we're talking like 12, 15 years ago, they were helpful and useful. But now, you know, I, um, I go backwards and forwards between these and homemade. So I just wanted to let you know, this is not a product push. Um, they're useful, but you can equally also go your own way, especially if you're already good with color theory. Okay, now the cleanup, uh, it's a little bit different from what I see my, when my buddies do uh, YouTube tutorials, they're very good. Um, and generally speaking, say on Gumpla, we want very clean, sharp panel lines. And I like that look too, uh, and often use it. With Machine and Krieger, my personal preference is to go with a slightly blurred look, even on finishes like this that are gonna be relatively clean. If you want the finish to be sharper and tighter, you need to work off a gloss finish and probably don't 
leave the enamel products to dry too long and also use a cleaning liquid to reactivate it on the clean, the clean parts to, uh, to also get a cleaner, tighter finish. And for doing that, I would work with either a list thinner again or um, something uh, you know, che relatively cheap and easy like the, the lighter fluid. Uh, it's much of a muchness. I don't feel that I get much of a different result between them. Now, I have not used these. I've used everything dry. And uh, to give you a quick demo of that, I mean, I want to show you some of the results I've got so far. Hopefully the camera picks it up. You can see that by going dry, you can get a, um, a more of a spread and diffused look. And uh, then whilst working with, um, oh, these are a really nice one to show. I really like this part on top here, a diffused look, which I want. Uh, I could go tight and then add more of the top, but this way is actually saving me steps. Uh, I quite like the finish, say, on this one here. Uh, a nice diffused look, which I think at this scale uh, looks really cool. Now I'll show you how I do that. I'm still mostly using brushes. I've got tighter, flat brushes like this, which after a little bit of use, tend to become like that. Both have their uses. Now you can tell things getting serious, because I got the glove on. For the tighter look, I go with the tighter brush, and I'm chamfering, chomping it, stippling, let's use all those words, back against detail lines. And you can see that produces quite a good finish, but because I've gone in dry and not cleaned the brush a lot between uses, I can then drag it out for an interesting and cool effect like that. Let me try to get it stable for you. Now this one's obviously quite splayed. That then produces quite a different effect too. We work it up to the line and more paint will come back over, giving us a more diffused look. I'm going backwards and forwards just based on whim. If I feel it looks a little too tight for what I'm after, I'll come back and stipple here with the rough one. Now there's obviously, this is one of the places I've placed the, uh, the solution. So I'll drag it down here to make a little bit of a streak start. Stipple across the line. This one's for Kurojishi and Andy, Santachi. The, uh, this also creates a slight maha effect. It's not on a camouflage, but it is a maha line across the panel line. That's something that uh, you guys can ping me on Discord to ask about. We had a discussion on that this morning. There we go. So nice and diffused. Well, let's make sure corner has a little bit of extra tension and love. Rub some in. And that's basically what I've achieved over the entire model. Like that. Okay, for my awesome supporters, I'm going to continue on working because that, uh, I could feel it at the end. I know when something is really good because Tomo will say, wow, that looked amazingly simple. And, he, and she said, you know, wow, you have a high level of skill. Uh, which is funny to hear from my wife who sees it uh, all the time. The, uh, I want to show you some more working process here, uh, especially on these different surfaces, because the, these, are, these are going to show uh, quite, they're going to be focal points for the model, and I thought I wanted to give you some more examples of it. Uh, here, instead of chopping it in with the flat brush, I'm going with the splayed one to, to spread that. Uh, I got a couple of reasons for thinking about this. I thought this operates in zero G, so maybe Maybe the grease moves out in these kinds of patterns, uh, or the low gravity hanger, for example. So like that. And again, same here, I'll work upside down for you. Zero G man, here we go. Now these have a quite heavy uh, layer of the, the gloss coat on them. So the enamel solution stays particularly you know, supple and wet longer. And it doesn't stain the surface as much either, which is, you know, good and bad. You can do different things with that. I can tell the brush is a little loaded, so I'm going to put a couple of spots around just for later. Okay. Now here's somewhere where we can use, actually, let's try a few things. I have always wanted to do this, and I'm sure I've done it. I've just never done it on video. Let's, let's put a spiral effect on there. Yeah, that also leaves cool different mark. Yeah, cool. I like that a lot. Now because this is uh, is very glossy, 
we can also clean up some of our, our marks super well without using any thinner at all. They don't blend. This is a, a, going to be a cleaning step on the glass. But the uh, I'll show you on the step before that if we cool. And you can see I'm careful not try not to make any real vectors and things uh, on the glossy surface because they do tend to stand out. Where's the leg I just did? There we go. Uh, some places too, we might want to uh, start with a bit of a vector and dry brush it in with a Q-tip. They're wonderful, wonderful uh, tools for this. And for my mate RJ, here you go. And let's get that finger action in there. Cool. Done. Now, does this one need any of this? No, I quite like that splay pattern. So a little bit cleaned up. And uh, one thing I can see is an opportunity for a speed vector for no good reason, because it's space. And no one can hear you clean. Aliens joke, there you go. Cool, I'm liking that a lot. Awesome. Please like and subscribe. And there we go, nice and easy, fast too. I hope that was useful for you. Come check out my website because I have the full build, paint and weathering steps for this model and more in the Mark 44 guide publication that will be available shortly. Please let me also mention my appreciation for the Paint on Plastic community whose donations bring these videos to you and support my work. Thanks always and stay safe.